Stasis is a sci-fi horror adventure game, and you play as John Marichek, a man who went into stasis with his wife and daughter on a vacation, but awoke out of stasis on a completely different ship with no sign of his wife or daughter. <sighs> this isn't my ship. And that's where the game starts. You coming out of stasis wondering, where is your wife? Where is your daughter? And how in the heck did you get on this ship? Stasis plays very much like a traditional adventure game. It's got completely 2D backgrounds. You pick up stuff in the environment, put it into your inventory. Sometimes you combine stuff in your inventory to make new things. You use stuff from your inventory on the environment to make things happen. You can also mouse over pretty much anything in the environment and get a really nicely detailed description of it, which is something that I'm going to talk a little bit more about later. Now, this being an adventure game, I think it's important to start out by talking about the puzzles, because that is one of the most important things in an adventure game. And in my opinion, many, many, many adventure games just do a terrible job with puzzles, and they end up being just so frustrating. And I end up feeling like I'm wasting my time, and I just have to use a bunch of walkthroughs and stuff, and it just really sucks. So let's talk about the puzzles. The puzzles are... I'm sad to say... pretty mediocre. I'll say this to their benefit. There's one thing that they do really well. The puzzles all do a good job of making sense in-universe. In the sense that, you know, most of the time you're just trying to get through a doorway or find some way to progress to where you need to go to find... to find more information, to find safety, to find your wife, to find your child. And in doing these things, most of the stuff you do as far as the puzzles go is pretty logical. You know, if you need to get through a door, maybe you blow it up or you find some way to unlock it. So you're not going to be doing completely random stuff like solving a sliding block puzzle or something like that. So they're pretty logical, but a big problem that they have is a lack of feedback. For example, there's a scene where you're in a morgue and you need to actually open up the furnace. And the furnace itself, when you go to use it, if you click on the furnace door, John, the character that you play as, moves his hands around the door like he's trying to activate it and open it. And then he just stops and then nothing happens. Now, doors are color-coded. Uh, some are red if they're locked, or they're blue if they're open and unlocked, or openable. And this particular door was blue. It was color-coded as if it could be opened. And when you go to click on it, John goes to open it or do something with it. But then it just doesn't open. It just never opened. John didn't comment. John didn't say, this door is locked. He didn't say, I can't open it. He didn't say, it's malfunctioning. He just didn't say anything. I was very confused, because it's blue, it, it seems like it's open, it seems like it's unlocked, and John seems to be unlocking it, or opening it, but nothing happens. Later I found out that it turns out it actually is locked, and you need to use something to unlock it. But that lack of feedback made me really confused, because I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know that I needed to unlock it. And another example, and I'll try to go light on any spoilers here, is there's a scene where there's a big cloud of bugs in a hallway. And these are ravenous bugs that will literally tear the flesh from your bones if you walk into them. So you need to disperse them. You need to get rid of this cloud of bugs so that you can actually pass through. And so you have this uh, this pheromone thing. This like little vial of pheromones that you can throw. So the first thing I did was I threw the pheromones into all the bugs. I just threw it right into the center of them. So this pheromone vial thing, it cracks, it lets out a gas, it lets out all the, all the pheromones, and... The visual feedback on this is very confusing. The bugs appear to disappear for like two seconds. You can imagine a cloud of bugs in a hallway, and then they disappear, and then they reappear after a couple seconds. That's what happens. So throw the vial, it cracks, it looks like the bugs disappear for a couple seconds, and then after a couple seconds, they kind of come back. So I thought, okay, this is a timed thing, right? I need to, like the pheromones maybe scare the bugs away. So maybe I need to throw it, and then I need to like wait a second for them to disappear, and then that's my opportunity to run through. So I did that. A bunch of times. And I died every single time. And every time I was just trying different timings, thinking, okay, maybe I'm just running too late, maybe I'm running too early. And then it turns out... <laughs> I, I don't want to spoil the solution to the puzzle, but I will simply say that it turns out the pheromones were not scaring the bugs, as I kind of thought before, because it looked like the bugs were disappearing but rather, it was actually attracting all of the bugs directly to where the pheromone vial was broken. But the visual feedback was terrible. It, all that was happening to the cloud of bugs is that they were disappearing. It was not clear at all that they were actually attracted to the vial. It was very confusing. 
Now, aside from the lack of feedback that often pops up, there's also another problem with the puzzles. And that's that often there's a lack of motivation or reason behind them. As I said before, the puzzles are all logical. They're fairly logical. You know, you need to open a pipe or something, you know, use a lever to open a thing, use a gun to blow up a thing. It's all pretty logical in the end. But the problem is a lot of puzzles are multi-stepped. There's multiple steps to go through until you reach that end result. And very, very frequently, I found that the little steps required in the early stages before the final solution to the puzzle didn't have a lot of motivation for me to do them. In the sense that I didn't know why I was doing things. I was picking things up for no real reason. I was using things on other things for no real reason other than because it's an adventure game and I need to do stuff to make stuff happen. Right, I ended up combining a lot of things with a lot of things just to see what would happen rather than with any specific motivation in mind. So all the time the game just felt aimless, like I was just trying everything on everything to see what would happen. It's like, is this what the game expects me to do? No, yes, yes, maybe, no, yes. Is this what the game expects me to do? Oh, this is what the game expects me to do. Cool, I don't know why I did that, but I did it. Awesome! That... That's a really bad feeling to have, to do stuff without any real clear motivation. It just, it doesn't feel good. The environments are also pretty dark and murky, and it can be pretty hard to actually find all the hotspots and all of the items you need to pick up. So what will happen probably sometimes, even if you're pretty thorough, you're probably going to miss something at some point. And as you know, in an adventure game, if you miss an item at some point pretty soon, it's going to come back to bite you in the ass, you're going to find yourself stuck, and you're not going to know why. And you're going to have to go back through all the scenes, and you're going to have to sweep the entire screen with your cursor just trying to find whatever hotspot you missed. And that really blows. So overall, the puzzles are, unfortunately, pretty mediocre. Okay, now let's talk about something that Stasis does a really good job with. It does a really good job of providing interesting text descriptions of pretty much anything in the environment. Almost anything that looks of any significance can be moused over, and each thing will have its own interesting text description. And they're not just dry, bare-bones descriptions, but they're usually pretty detailed and just filled with all these little details that just add a bit more creepiness, a, bl a bit more bloodiness, a bit more rustiness to this old, decaying ship. Each one has its own personality that just really adds to how disturbing everything is. And it's really a joy to mouse over pretty much everything and just read the description. Even a bunch of hospital beds in a room, for example, each one will probably have its own separate description. There's really been an incredible amount of work just put into the descriptions alone, and it really shows. Another thing Stasis does a really great job with is the sound design. The ship just feels... it feels ominous, it feels dark, it feels creepy. It doesn't just look like that, but it sounds like that too. There's groans and creaks of the old ship. There's that constant hum of, of distant machinery working in the background. Feeling so empty, so lonely. But those sounds will occasionally just be completely cut like a knife with some distant blood-curdling scream that sounds like somebody just got murdered. It always sounds like there's something horrible happening in the distance. And it doesn't do it too often. It doesn't overplay its hand. These random screams they're pretty spaced apart, but you'll completely forget about them. You'll just be going about your business, just checking out the scene, or maybe reading an entry on somebody's PDA, and then suddenly there'll just be this scream in the distance that is just like, holy shit, what just happened? It's, it's so unsettling. They did a really great job with the sound design. Talking about reading PDA entries also reminds me, this is very much a traditional adventure game in that aspect too. There are tons of PDA entries to read from all the personnel that worked aboard the ship. Now this can be a big issue. If you have a lot of PDA entries, you know, a lot of logs and notes to read in a game, and if they're not interesting, then it's just really, really boring and nobody really cares. But in this case, they did just as, just as good of a job with the entries and all the logs as they did with the descriptions for just random items on the ship. Each log is really well written, and each one feels different, because you're going to be reading a lot of logs from a bunch of different personnel, and each one has a different personality to it, because each person had a different personality. And there's always something relevant to the story. It's not just going to be some random thing that has nothing to do with what you're seeing, 
every log will give you a bit more of a clear picture, a bit more of a wider understanding of what's been happening aboard this ship and what has led it to become as, as messed up as it is. So the entries were really a joy to read, and I really enjoyed them. And since I've mentioned the PDA entries, let's go ahead and talk about the story. Of course, I'll avoid any major spoilers, but I don't think it'll come as much of a surprise to anybody that the story becomes basically about science gone wrong. I'll just leave it at that, I won't say too much. But it becomes a story about science gone wrong. And reading all these entries tells you more about how exactly science got went wrong, and how the corporation behind it was allowed to operate, and how it was able to get to this point, and how the research got to this point, and all the key players behind the research, the people spearheading it, and you just learn more about how all this horrible stuff came to be. And in the beginning, it's very interesting. And I will say that the story is... it remains pretty interesting throughout, but it is without a doubt at its strongest in the beginning. When you first start reading the entries and you're just learning just the basic framework of what's happening, and you're just getting a hint of what's happening, that's when it's at its strongest. It's really intriguing to learn more about what's happening, as you're just kind of poking around the edge of this big mystery, wondering how in the hell did it get this bad. So in the beginning it's very strong, but I will say that later on towards the end, it, it gets gradually weaker and weaker. And the reason for that is because it starts to get pretty silly towards the end of the game, I mean, we're talking about science gone wrong here, right? So we're kind of talking about, like, mad scientists, you know, going crazy with power and doing experimentations that they shouldn't do and playing God and all that stuff. But it starts to get really cliched and really silly towards the end. To the point where the... I won't spoil too much here, of course. But to the point where the main villain of the game literally believes himself to be a god. I'm not exaggerating. He literally believes himself to be a god. It's, it just becomes really, really silly. It's, you know, I, I can believe that, ge you know, genetic research and stuff like that in science can go horribly wrong and people can be unethical and do unethical things. Like, of course, that makes sense. I can believe that. It has happened in the past. It will happen in the future. But you can only go so far with the whole evil scientist thing and you can only go too far with the ethical breaches before it just becomes almost comically silly, and unfortunately the game really does go to comically silly. It really does take it to that point. And so by the end, I just wasn't that invested in the story. It just became too unbelievable, too... too silly. Just way too silly. Now let's talk about something else that the game does really well. The visuals. The game has really nice art design. Uh, it is unfortunately a bit blurry. I believe all the assets were rendered in 720p. So if you play in a higher resolution, like 1080p, as I did, then all the assets are scaled up, so it ends up looking a bit blurry. Which is definitely not helped by how murky and dark and grimy the whole game is. That's one of the extra reasons it makes it hard to actually find hotspots and stuff like that. But uh, but aside from that, but aside from just the blurriness, and some of the animations look kind of weak, but aside from that, the actual just design of everything that you encounter is really good. There's so much detail everywhere, everything is covered in and just like grime and rust and blood and weird stuff <laughs> where appropriate. And it really adds to the atmosphere wonderfully. I mean, the ship that you're aboard, the Groom Lake, uh, it's, an, it's an aging ship. It's an old ship. It needs a lot of maintenance. And it's been run for far longer than it probably should have been in service for. And you can really feel that. It just feels like the ship is falling apart. It feels old and it feels rusty and creaky and just dirty. You can really feel that in the way everything looks. And there's all sorts of just... You know, it's a wonderful mixture of new technology and old technology. Because this game is set in the future. And there's all sorts of future technologies, like lasers and holograms and things like that. But at the same time, it also feels like delightfully antiquated, some of the systems on board this ship. At the same time as having lasers and all this awesome, like, nanite medical technology and stuff, the computer systems that you use seem incredibly old and antiquated. For the most part, they're all pretty much just text, like kind of command line text operated, with a keyboard that looks kind of like a, more like a typewriter than any sort of a modern keyboard. And you can see all these, like, wires and connections behind the computer that look like they've just been kind of jury-rigged together, and it just feels both modern and old at the same time, in a way that just feels really, really cool. Now, let's talk about the bugginess. This game was actually pretty buggy for me. 
There were two cases in my playthrough where something happened that reset my progress back 5 to 10 minutes. And that was really frustrating. So one of these cases was during this really intense scene where somebody was in danger. There's a whole cutscene and somebody was in danger and of course I was waiting for when the cutscene would end so I would have to do something. And I'd have to save somebody, right? So somebody's in danger, I need to save them. And then as soon as the cutscene ended and I had control of John again, so I needed to save this person, the first thing I thought of was, oh god, I better save the game, just in case I fail to save this person. You know, I better save my game. So I pressed escape. And when I pressed escape, instead of opening up the menu so I could save the game, what it did, inexplicably, is it loaded my previous save game. I have no idea why. Uh, escape is not a key that normally loads a save game, normally just opens the menu. But for some reason when I pressed it here, during this really intense scene, it loaded my last save game. Which, because the game is really, really, really bad at giving you autosaves, was from about 10 minutes ago. So you can just imagine, the whole game is leading up to this really intense scene where you have to save somebody, you know? Everything is coming to a fever pitch. And then I press escape, and then I have to redo progress that I just lost for 10 minutes. It completely killed the mood, it completely killed the pace, and it completely ruined that scene. All the emotional impact just drained away. It really sucked. And another bug happened where somehow John was able to walk into a place that is normally unwalkable. You know, normally you can only walk on the floor, right? Not on the walls or something like that. But for some reason, at one point, I actually got John lodged into the wall. And he ended up being able to walk all over the wall. However, what happened is that he couldn't walk back onto the floor. So, like, somehow his, his movement plane had changed to being able to walk on the wall, but no longer being able to walk on the floor. So I fumbled around with that for a bit, trying to get John to go back on the floor. He wasn't able to, so I had to load my last save game. Which, once again, because the game has terrible autosaves, was from about five minutes ago. Also, the game has a lot of unskippable cutscenes, I should mention. Which is especially a problem right at the very end. At the very end of the game, there's this intense scene. I won't spoil it, so I'll just say there's an intense scene where you're expected to do something, and if you don't do the right thing, you die. And, of course, it took me a couple times to actually do the right thing. So, every single time I didn't do the right thing, and my character died, I have to wait for the death animation, which is pretty lengthy, it's like 10 seconds and I can't skip it. Then I wait for it to load, and the autosave is from before a cutscene. So I have to load from before a cutscene, and then I have to go into the cutscene, and the cutscene is unskippable, so I have to go through like 30 seconds of dialogue to actually be able to do anything again. So you can imagine, this is the climax of the game. This is right at the end of the game. I do the wrong thing, I die, I have to wait 30 seconds and sit through the same dialogue again, and then I try something else, which isn't the right thing, and then I die, and then I have to wait 30 seconds again, hearing the same dialogue, unskippable, and then I finally do the right thing. Once again, just like the weird loading save game that ruined the previous scene, this unskippable this unskippable cutscene that didn't have an autosave right after it completely ruined the the climax. Literally just ruined the climax of the game. It ruined the ending. The fact is, by the end I didn't really care about the story anyway because of how silly everything had become, but you can imagine that this only made it worse. So in the end, what is Stasis? It's a game that has really nice art design. It's got a really nice sound design. They put a lot of effort into making the logs and just the text descriptions of everything that you mouse over, really detailed, which brings everything to life. The atmosphere can be really great sometimes, but it's just so often ruined by how silly the story gets, how buggy the game can be, and how frustrating the puzzles are. So in the end, I think I can only really recommend this game to people who really get excited when they hear the words sci-fi, horror, point-and-click adventure. If you hear those words and you think, wow, I've got to play that, then I think you'll like it, despite all the issues I just talked about. If you'd like to play Stasis for yourself, you'll find some links in the description. Thank you for watching.